lived Ahmed Kathrada. May his uh, soul rest in peace. Today we're paying tribute to him in this uh, special broadcast that will be giving you rolling coverage throughout the course of the day, giving you details of the plans for his funeral and also hearing from people uh, across South Africa and uh, other parts of the world uh, sharing their thoughts. Now one person that uh, knew him well and spent a lot of time with him is Dennis Goldberg, one of the uh, last surviving Rivonia trialists and he was active in the struggle against apartheid. He was in Imprisoned along with other key members of the anti-apartheid movement, including the late Ahmed Kathrada, Dennis Goldberg joins us now from our Cape Town studios. Uh, thank you very, very much for joining us on this very, very sad day. And I can imagine that it's a, it's a very difficult time for you. Good morning and to your audience. On what is a very sad day, because you know what I admired about my comrade Cassie? in the Ravonia trial together is that we all faced the death sentence, we knew that. And yet he had a calmness about it. Uh, you know, the interviews we've done together at the Lily's Leap Museum where we were all arrested. And he says, we had time to think about it and we knew we were going to die. And that was it. You don't take up arms against the government and expect to survive. Survival is something quite special. And as he said now in his interview, a lot of our comrades died. 137 were hanged. Over a thousand were murdered out of hand by the security police and the agencies of apartheid. So, you know, we've contributed. And you know what's special about Cathy as a comrade of Indian extraction is that he's able to transcend the oppression of the Indian people to oppression of people on grounds of racism for all the national minorities but also the majority of African people and build this into a belief in justice for all and that's why his foundation now the Ahmed Kathrada Foundation uh, upholding the principles of non-racism mm. at a time when amongst all sections of our community, of our population, there's a growing sense of racial exclusivity. It's for me, not for us, against all the beliefs of our liberation movement. It's a very important legacy and I admire him for it and the foundation. But can I tell him of my sadness for Barbara Hogan, his partner, for his family, for Zora, particularly his secretary, niece? Uh, we're all devastated, you know, to lose somebody so close and that we've shared so much with. Uh, Mr. Goldberg, uh, he was so young when he went to Robben Island, and yet he displayed a maturity of a man beyond his years. Where did that come from, do you think? Well, when you're involved in <laughs> politics and protest and in our prison from age 13, maybe you grow up quick. But you talk about him being young. He says, when I turned 80 years old, he sent me a message to say, and this is his humor and his charm. He said, you were the baby in the Ravonia trial, and even though you're 80 years old now, you're still the baby. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to laugh with him about that, you know? When people talk about him, they talk about um, how, you know, uh, this moral correctness, always doing the right things, always being on the right side of integrity. Was this throughout his life? What drove him to be this person? Well, I would say because he joined the Young Communist League early <laughs> on, where you learnt that it's not for you, it's for people in general. It's not for a specific elite, it's for the mass of the people. And he held to those principles till the end. Uh, he never gave up on it. He might not have expressed it in the same way. We have all our disillusionments through history and things not going right. But the principle of 
can I say, for me and many others, what my comrade Cathy lived was the belief that to be human, you serve others. It's not about self. And so in the end, there was Cathy agonizing about the corruption in the leadership of the ANC at all levels, mm -hmm. and then having the courage to write to President Zuma, his comrade, and saying you would serve the country better if you stood down. That takes courage, you know, mm -hmm. to defend the Prime Minister, the, the, the Minister of Finance, Pravin Gordon, to go to court. You know, Cathy was frail towards the end of his life, but he was still, still there, standing up for what's right. Where it comes from, why is it such a rare quality? But what an example. I, I can't explain it. He just had it. In some ways, I get a sense that perhaps he was a, a reluctant hero. Um, he just never really wanted that hero status. Um, do you think that he had a, a sense of the enormity of his contribution, or he just, he just got on with it? <laughs> what a difficult question. He was a modest man. He was a serious man. He was a courageous man. He was compassionate. Uh, he was Cathy, he was Uncle Cathy. He was witty. He retained his cool and he retained his belief. And inherent in this idea of service is you stand back, you let others be in the limelight. I, I have to confess, I don't like being one of the two survivors of the Ravonia trial because I'm talking about Cassie, but it throws me into the limelight. And I don't feel, I feel like Cassie that, you know, so many people contributed. We're just part of a great big movement for justice. Mm -hmm. And, the, and uh, what I would have to say is if we want to honor the life of Ahmed Cassie Castrada, a dear departed comrade, uh, we have to go on. Mm. We have to go on and demand that the values we fought for are upheld, that we have a government that's accountable, that we honor the, supreme, the highest courts in our land. We stop ducking and diving to defend individuals, that we uphold the principles written into our constitution. That's the way we will honor his life not by giving up and just crying, but continuing till we come to our end. And I pledge myself to do that. There are, there's a whole generation of young people who uh, are watching this and uh, are probably trying to figure out, you know, we know of Nelson Mandela, we've, we've kind of heard of Ahmed Kathrada. Just how important a man uh, was this man? You know, I was up at Lily's Leaf the other day, just a week ago, and uh, I experienced what Cathy experiences, did experience. A whole new generation of younger, university-educated people, some in government, some in corporations, some in the NGOs, who have to come and speak to Uncle Cathy or Uncle Dennis and to assert their belief in our stand against the violations of our Constitution. And they support it. So what's the importance of the life of Ahmed Kathrada? Is that people see that it's possible to be selfless. It's possible to uphold principle. And I must say, I'm sure for Cathy, as for others of us, you don't do it for the recognition. 
You do it because it's right to do it, to give your life for freedom for all. But the recognition is sweet. I just wish I would have been able to see him. I did see him a month ago as a tribute for Nelson Mandela, uh, within a day of the day of Nelson Mandela's release in February. And he was very frail and very weak, and he was profoundly deaf. But in the end, he spoke up, and he spoke in such a strong voice for all the things we stood for and that Nelson Mandela epitomized. Made mm. famous by Oliver Tambo. Mm. And Oliver Tambo led us to freedom as well. And this is the quality of the man. Not well, frail, but with a sense of duty. Duty to all our people. Mm. That's the importance of Kathy. Uh, we're so, so sorry for, for your loss. And uh, in fact, I think we'll, we'll leave it there for the time being. Thank you so much for sharing those uh, many, many memories of uh, Mr. Kathrada. And uh, we uh, share your pain. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us this day. Thank you for inviting me on the show. All right. That's a struggle stalwart, uh, Dennis Goldberg, um, grieving and uh, feeling the pain of a lifelong friend uh, that he shared in the struggle and the years afterwards, uh, sharing some very poignant uh, memories and thoughts. And I think uh, one thing that's coming through is that uh, the struggle continues and that uh, we should, if we're going to remember him, uh, think about service of others. It's, it's about not concentrating on the I, I, I. Uh, that was Dennis Goldberg.